Good day, my name is Terry Papavonomos. I'm an infectious disease fellow at the University of Cape Town, Grotteskia Hospital. And today I'll be illustrating how to put up a drip in a sterile manner um, on a patient. So, firstly, you need to go and introduce yourself to the patient and make sure you're putting a drip in the correct patient. And importantly, you need to look at the indications of putting up a drip for the patient. Does the patient really need a drip? Because obviously there's a risk of um, developing drip site infections and the morbidity and mortality that goes with that. Right, what do you need? You will need your sterile gloves. You can get a, a sterile pack. You'll need your opsite, your drip needle, as well as your portal valve alcohol-based solution for your hand hygiene. You're going to need an antiseptic. Doesn't matter which antiseptic you use, it all depends on the drying time. In this case, I'm going to be using a chlorhexidine alcohol-based solution, and then you also need your uh, surface disinfectant, and then obviously you're going to have your um, sharps container on this side. All right, so what you can then do is do your hand hygiene, and what you do is you start off with your fingertips, put one to three mils in your hands, and rub them, thumbs, hands. You should do this for 20 seconds, the reason being is you need the alcohol to work and when the alcohol works it dries and kills the bacteria and the other microorganisms that might be on your hands. For the rest of the video I won't be doing the whole 20 second thing um, so you can always refer to this part of the video again. Okay then I'm going to clean the area with my surface disinfectant. Then what you can do is you can start to open your pack, open it nice and slowly, that it doesn't tear. You can then also open up your sterile gloves, take your red bin, Put it somewhere close to you. Okay, then you're going to have your blue paper sheet. And what you need to do is the dark blue side is um, the side that will repel fluids. And your light blue side is the side that will absorb fluids. So... I recommend putting the dark blue side at the bottom and the light blue side at the top. Okay, it doesn't matter if it hasn't opened completely as long as you've got an area to work with. Then you can open up your drip needle. Pour your antiseptic into the well over here over your cotton. What you can then do is open up your op site, and when you open your op site, what you need to do is you need to take your pen and write the date that you're putting the that you're going to put up the drip. And I'll explain now why we do that in this order. Okay, once that is done, you can then do your hand hygiene, and you're going to put your tourniquet on. If you don't have an alcohol-based solution, the other option is just to go wash your hands with soap and water. Okay, once you're ready, you're then going to, sorry, open your gloves. And then, once again, your hand hygiene. Make sure your hands are nice and dry, um, because if they're not, you're going to struggle to put on your, your gloves. And then put your gloves on in a sterile manner. Okay, wonderful. Then what you can do is you can start cleaning the area. So left hand passes to right hand. 
Doesn't matter if you're left-handed, right-handed, whatever you want, just pass the one, pass from one to the other. Clean the area in circular motions. I like to start with a, a big, large area and clean as much as possible. And it's important to allow the area to, to dry. You can then uh, take your green paper, put it over the area. If you don't have a green paper, you can always put a blue paper underneath. Um, I like the green one because it allows you to have a hole in the middle which allows you to um, specifically uh, go over the, the vein. Okay, then what you can do is you can get the rest of your equipment ready. And then what you're going to do is you're going to tell the patient you're going to put up the drip now and you're going to anchor the vein and then just don't touch the area that you went in that you cleaned. Now what you can do is I like to get a bit of cotton in case I spill. I put it on the side over there. I then advance the cannula and then I release the tourniquet. So once the needle is inside, then what you can do is you can apply a bit of pressure to the area so that blood doesn't pour out and then discard of your needle immediately and then you can put your valve on top and you can secure it into that area. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put your upside over the area and make sure that there's no blood that is spilt on the sides because the risk of there being blood that's um, on the sides is that some of the bacteria actually like blood and therefore can start to proliferate underneath and it's important that you completely see the, air, the area so that any water or other uh, liquid material doesn't get underneath and then I'm going to illustrate why we put this date over here and what people would do is actually put the this extra sticky tape over the front of the cannula. The problem with doing that is that when drip side infection starts you might miss it because it's going to be covered by this uh, tape on top of it. So now what we're saying is rather put the tape on the side with the date so that you know when the blood when the drip was inserted into the patient. Okay and then obviously it's very important to thank the patient and you'll need to clean up your area. So what you can then do is do your hand hygiene and once that is done you then need to go and write in the patient's file that a drip has been inserted peripherally and um, you need to state the date and the time that that was done and that's how you do a drip in a sterile manner. Thank you very much. 